Okay. Um, this week's face, we've got a lot to get through. So uh, as, as, as before, I always pile on way too much. I hope I can get to your voice this time. I wanted to start by um, hitting you with the website thing. There is, as I said last week and before, there's no more important thing than your driving people to the point in which they're going to buy it. Now, let's assume you're not using something like uh, uh, Etsy or um, Art Rehome My Own or, or Art Find or anything like that. You've, you've created your own website. The most important part of um, creating your own website is to make sure that you hit people with the first um, uh, the first um, uh, things you've got, which is the newest work you've got and how to get to it. Um, now, I'm going to cut straight in um, to that in a second. But before I get onto that, there's one step further back I want to take. And that is before you set up your website and you get going with your website, you've got to have pictures. Now, um, one of the worst things that I see on the internet is badly taken pictures under bad light sometimes off in a room with loads of other objects in and this that, and the other. It is so very important that the pictures that you put on your website are the best they can look, hopefully in large size as well. So I'm going to take you through a very quick um, uh, um, uh, show you how to use Photoshop, for example, but you can use this with any of the elements that has a thing called a skew function. This is really important because it helps you straighten up and get pictures right. There's nothing worse than sort of slightly off and wonky pictures. So if um, uh, Hayden can put on my screen um, with you guys, I shall show you what I am talking about. Um, so let's have a look. How did we get to this? Are we on screen? Um, now, I can't see whether you're looking at me or whether you're looking at my screen. Okay. Share my video. Okay. Can you all see? Can anyone communicate with me that you can see? Because I'm just looking at my own screen at the moment. Are you there? Anyone there? Debs? It seems to be lost. Maybe it's because I'm not in this. Can you all hear me? Seems I can't hear anybody for some reason. Very strange. Um, hey, hey, Mark, can you hear me? Yes, Debs. Yeah, yeah, we can. Um, you can sorry, see my I, screen. I was, yes. Okay. No, no we Great. no we can't. We we can hear you, but we um. You can't see my screen yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can hear you. Um, let's right. see who can hear my you. My screen share. Do I have to click something on to show my screen? Let's have a look. Participant security reaction, closed caption. Can okay. I just say a welcome to everybody that's just tuning in as well um, and, and just following us this moment. Welcome. Great. Um, oh, oh hold up. We have um, some people can hear you and see you. Okay. I'm now sharing my screen. Can you all see this? Yep, I, I think so. Uh, um, I, I, I think so. I can hear you and see you. Yes, yes. Okay. We're, we're, we're on. Lovely. Great. Okay, thanks. Sorry for that interlude. This is the first time I've done this. Right. I took a couple of pictures earlier of a sort of a how not to and how to do things. First of all, you'll see the difference here. You won't believe how many pictures I get from people that are like this. They're skew with. You've got coffee machines and lights in the background. It's under yellowed light, so it doesn't matter what you do with this, you're gonna have problems and issues with it. What you need to do is make sure that you always take your pictures straight on if you're going to edit them. Here is an in natural light. So I took this out into the conservatory and did it in natural light uh, there um, so that you get the best picture you can on your screen. Um, and preferably not like this with lots of other stuff in. Now, I can fix stuff like this and I can make it better. There's a skew function and it's really important because you don't always, even this is not completely straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you very quickly how I do things. So if I wanted to show something, for example, that had um, 
photos with 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 the um, picture I grab as close as I can to the picture the way it is and I crop it I go into edit you should have a function like this yourself there it is crop so that gets rid of all the flat but there's still some black lines around the outside so now I go into the skew function and the skew function basically you can pull a picture right over like this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get rid of the black. So now I know that this picture I've just taken with a little bit of skewing like this, that is now absolutely true. Okay, you've got 100% of the picture square. Yeah, so that would be great to send to somebody. There's no faffing, there's no anything else. Now for the website, what I only want is this center part is the actual picture itself. So I can just, having straightened it right up like this, I can now take that section and I can crop that. What I now have, assume is it does it, hello, catch up, it crop that, is I now have the actual image I want and I can make it bigger to play with it. And I know the lighting's gonna be almost right if I look at the lighting section on it, you see how it's the lighting curves has gone almost to there, which means that I'm using, if this has got a big gap here, it means you're not brightening up the picture, you're not using it as much as you can. Same at the bottom, if it needs to be darkened up. So um, I know that that's fairly true, fairly true the way it is, okay? Um, and I can now save that. Now, what I usually do is save, I try to save pictures at least about 2,000 pixels square. Well, this particular picture is square. Um, but around 2,000 pixels. Obviously, you don't want to up the pixels, so you want to take pictures that are big enough to be able to crop down right. And what you should end up with, all going well, um, is, let me just, is this thing screen shared? Are we seeing this one? So I'll go to Philip Tyler now, and hopefully you will see, this is his page. This is the finished one that I've done. That's the picture, and in Super Zoom, when I zoom, use the Super Zoom feature, which I hope you will have on your website when you do it, you can really see this picture in detail. And it's good lighting so that you know it's really taken well. And these, these are the most important things when taking a picture. You've got to make sure that the picture is true and it is um, um, as best lighting it can get because you don't want it arriving at somebody's place to find it's either over lightened or under lightened and it's not true to the picture is. So while I've got it on screen, um, I just wanted to double check. I've got the image sizes in the end. The only other thing about the naming of it is when you've finished all this, please don't just leave it as JPEG da 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 da. When you do, um, uh, you name something for optimization, you want to give it the name. So your artist name followed by the name of the painting, at least that because Google optimization will pick up on that. And the more they see of your name and the more they see of your painting stuff on there. So it's really important that your pictures are named properly. Okay. Um, I wanna now get onto the website part of it so we can keep tuning forward now. Um, this is my website, okay? This is the Harbour Gallery website. As you can see, you go onto the website, there's no biography from somebody. There's no wading through something to get to have to go up to here to get to the newest pictures and then click on newest pictures to get to it and then be asked whether you want to see seascapes or landscapes and then you have to click on them and go somewhere else it's complicated okay Mark? Nate? yes sorry to interrupt we're not actually seeing that the um we're not seeing that at the moment we're just not we're still on phillips okay you're still seeing phillips phillips. Beautiful painting yeah but we can't right. see the no, yeah. i've clearly got to do something new share uh let's try this you should be seeing it now sorry yeah there we got it right. that's lovely okay, thanks great. mark okay thanks Debs. um so now what we've got is is the way your website should be there are if you go on to this is an example of mine you go onto mine the home page hits you with pictures bang and all of these images here are the newest pictures we have on the website at the moment so don't hit someone with your biography don't hit someone with would you like to go here, here, here? Just take them there straight away. Now, as I'm a gallery, of course, I have lots of different artists. You won't. You will go to your homepage and let's take Philip, for example. Um, 
you will go to your home page and it will say welcome to Philip Tyler or whatever and here bang straight away are all the images you have and yes right at the bottom out of the way if somebody wants to scroll down to it you can have your biography if you want but don't have it at the top so people have got to work hard to get to the paintings hit them with the paintings first so if your website is like this this is where the optimization comes in you go to the website you can see all of the paintings and you say oh that's beautiful i'm going to have a look at that in detail you click on it it's one click from your home page and you are already in the point where you could if it was available buy it yeah you can go and have a look at it in detail because you really like that picture and when you're done with that the person can either move on to looking at the other pictures one by one and if they want to all of the details are here at the bottom uh, how you've um, how much it is how big it is and everything else and they can click on it and buy it straight away so that's what you want on your website all the other stuff that comes from your website gallery info your offers all the other information can be in your hing or up here in your hamburger menu as it's called you'll see why um, you can have it all in there or wherever this is the mobile will be this but so people will be aware of that um, so i hope that gives you an idea of how quickly it will work um, if you have a website as i said last week anything more than two years old you will need to refresh it because it won't have half of these options that we're talking about okay and as always i say always wherever you put things on facebook share whatever you make sure that it always bounces back to um where you can buy them um now i've got to find a way to actually get back to my face or can you do that hayden probably hayden's going to be the man to do this um, bear with us and i'll just use this opportunity to welcome all the new joiners and say so mark's talking tonight about artwork editing pits uh, pictures and the website uh, and welcome and we're back to you mark okay great let me get back to me so i can see what i'm doing okay so that hopefully gives you a little outline of the way websites um should work efficiently okay um and how to just a quick uh help with editing photos it's so important that your photos are good that it's easy to get to a paypal button once you've shared it and once you go over to social media and so the first thing is get your photos together the second thing is get them uploaded and get them onto your website and get a paypal button on them or something or if you don't have your own website get them onto a place that's got somewhere to sell them the third part about your promotion is now going to be moving on to the social media thing and so this is what i want to quickly whiz by now because we're just starting to get to the point where we're going to get some questions so i just want to quickly go into your, your voice now as i said on my uh, thing last before disney Branson all of these people had names they've got names these businesses and there's a reason for that and they use them and if you don't have a name businesses like this create them so you've got Ronald McDonald or you've got Colonel Sanders whether he existed or not, I don't know people do it for a reason because you attach to something now luckily you you guys are all you've got yourself you've got nothing else i use myself quite a lot i'm quite prominent in, in support in pressuring my business that can have its downsides in the long term because of course you know if your business grows more and more you become more and more prevalent with it but i think richard branson managed to get on with it so it's not a not a problem um you, you have got something that nobody else has got and that's you so what you have to do is you have to find a way to bring out your personality online you have to find a way to be um, something. Now, you're not going to please everybody. And they're going to, some people, like I said last week, there are some people who think I'm absolutely awful because they're, you know, loud mouth or whatever else. And that's fine. They can think about it and, and they will. And there are people that love me for the exact re same reasons. So um, don't try and please everybody, but be yourself at all times. Um, 
and those that like you will follow you and they will follow you in droves and those that don't like you will just go away and go somewhere else and that's absolutely fine um i find that people buy people they don't necessarily buy paintings yes they will fall in love with a painting and see a painting but they will buy into your personality in the long run and that's what will continue to keep them coming back time and time again so as much as you can put yes yourself on the website and a little bit about you on the website but try and get that voice into everything you post on social media I mean, if you go and look at my posts on social media they're pretty preposterous i use things like blimineck and and blimey and all these sort of silly words but that's just the way i talk in real life so try your best to try and get your personality over because people will buy into it and as i say not everybody but enough people um, so um, you've got to talk about why you do what you do, where you do it, so the locations you're in, um, how you do it, the, the things you use to talk about, uh, what you paint, why you paint that particular subject, all this. All of these things are what draw people into your world. And so use them because they are unique to you. And it's your uniqueness is what will help you sell more and more art and bring people into this world of yours, okay? So don't be afraid of it, be proud of it, and be loud about it. But most of all, be positive. Nobody wants to hear about how you're having a bad day or your grand's ill or your dog's, you know, they just don't want to hear that. They might have sympathy for you in the long run, but after a while they'll say, you know what, this person just needs to get over themselves. So although, I think that Instagram, I'm all happy and everything's great and the world is perfect, you know, is ridiculous too. Um, I think you just need to be a little more upbeat. You are in fact selling something. You're not, you're not, you are selling yourself, but if you're selling yourself as some negative low, oh God, life is awful and doesn't the art world treat you terrible and all this, that and the other, it, it doesn't really do, do you justice. So try and be upbeat, try and be positive. Very last thing before I move on to questions is to help with your voice, use newsletters. Now, what I do with that, um, and I'll go through this more in future, is every time I make a sale, I, if it's in the gallery, I ask people for their email address so that I can send them a certificate of provenance. Yeah. Yes, they get a certificate of provenance, but yes, I want to use that email and I will ask their permission in when I send them a certificate of provenance by email to say, um, uh, uh, I hope it's okay if we get in touch with you in future and let you know about new things that happen in the gallery. Very rarely do people turn it down, um, but they do and they can always unsubscribe. So you'll always have that in newsletters. But I find 99% of people want to know what you're doing and want to know about you. So get yourself a database, get yourself business up. This is really important. I know it's just like, oh, it's just a sale and it will go. That sale could be 10 more sales if you leave that person in the loop and keep them in touch. So make a database. And when you do it, every time you make a sale, get that person's name, get that person's address possibly, but definitely email address and get it into the database and then create a MailChimp or whatever else database with all your proceedings and regularly I do it for the Harbour Gallery on uh, the first of the month and tomorrow is the British Contemporary uh, email goes out once a month two separate businesses you regularly send out something to everybody um, and let them know what's going and if they don't want to hear it they'll unsubscribe it's like I say about Facebook and I'll go on to social media next week you invite people to like your page and I'll show you how to do that but if they don't want to like your page or they get sick of it, they'll, they'll go off. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't invite them to. So give them the chance to keep in your world. Keep them in your world when you have created that and you talk about yourself. You talk about the why, the where, the how and with what when you're talking about the paintings and why you love painting it, what was going through your head at the time. All of this stuff. It's interesting stuff and it's stuff that people will buy into. Okay, so picture editing websites, your voice, they're all part of that marketing thing, which is gonna really help you create a world 
and get people into it and hold them in it. And that is where sales ultimately come from. So do we have any questions? Mark, we have um, um, a really good question from Denise, um, who's um, put the question earlier on. Um, now, Denise wants to know, is, is it possible to create um, two pages, say on our, our very own art free home, as she's two different styles? And she'd like to keep these separate. And I think that's a good question for other artists in, in different areas. So she's got two different styles she wants to keep separate. I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't have two different styles if you really think that they're totally separate. Um, I personally would be tempted to sort of separate them out on, in the same platform because otherwise what you've got is you've got multiple databases and you've got multiple work to do so you have to always keep them separate um, and that that's quite a lot of work then you're creating yourself quite a lot of work yes if it's really that different if you really think the audiences are totally different for them um, but the problem is when you have them two completely separate what you've got is that if somebody might like that as well you've lost them because you are not showing them that side of yourself um, so unless you've got a way to actually bring them all together or constantly bring one platform into the other, um, it seems to me that it would be better to have them in one place because it's less marketing and the people who like that stuff will buy that stuff and look at that stuff and the people who like that stuff will buy and look at it. But there may be people who like both. And so you'd have to market the same things to same people at different times. It sounds complicated to me, but that's, that's entirely your call. And we have a question here from Larry, who is actually joining us from a very spring-like Boston. And, and he would like Lovely to know, um, were you suggesting, Mark, putting your name in each photo's URL? Uh, yeah, naturally that will happen. So if you name a photograph, the reason I say if you name it, if you've ever scrolled over a photograph with your mouse, sometimes a little pop-up will come up. That's called an alt key. So it's, it's, it's basically an alt route. So it's telling you what that photo is. Now, if when you do your, save your photo as your name and the name of the, the, the thing in it, there is when you upload it onto a website, a platform, also a place where you can put in that same thing. I just copy and paste the same name of the photo into the alt key. What you're doing is if that, painting ever gets lost in the interweb which it will it'll get picked up by google if you've ever done a search for your name you'll find photographs in the in the image search you'll find photographs of lots of paintings by you and google has drawn those in because of those namings now if you don't put those namings in it's just a bunch of numbers you've lost that opportunity to market yourself so never lose that the time it takes you to change the name of something your name the name of the painting, other information if you want. You can make it as long as you want. You can even put in things like, you know, if it was painted in Cornwall, you could put in Cornwall, and even if it's not in the title name. It gets a very long title then, but they're all great for marketing. Is that some people will Google. I've had sales from people uh, because they've gone and Googled Cornwall and they've found paintings of mine up there and they've gone, oh, that's nice. And they've clicked on it and it's taken them through to my website and I've got a sale. And that's only happened because my pictures have that name in somewhere in them. So use it. Thank you, Mark. Um, no, actually, I was just making sure nobody had missed us when they just joined and what what we, they, they knew, what the chat was based in case they had any questions. But just to say to anyone, please, please do ask any questions um, for Mark and we, um, um, Mark was, Mark's here to answer them. Okay, if we've got any other, keep me in touch, Debs. I'll just go over what we're gonna go through next week at this time Thanks, at Mark. six o'clock. Um, so next week, I'm gonna go on to social media and to apps. So um, how, when you, uh, you've got your names of your social media. If you remember last week, I talked about making sure that the names are all similar. So if you're Jeff Bloggs Cornish artist in Twitter, then you should be Jeff Bloggs Cornish artist in Facebook and also if you can in Instagram and any other accounts you have. So try and it's difficult, you make it difficult for yourself, but try and keep cinema 
in all your names. Um, so I'm going to talk about how to use social media as best you can to try and drive more people to you and to make people aware of who you are and also make sure that you are getting the likes and from the people who do come and visit your page. And also I'm going to talk about apps. Now apps are really important. I use a few of them, things like Hootsuite to post to all my uh, social media in one shot. It makes time, it saves you such a lot of time. Um, then uh, I'm going to talk about things like using apps like uh, video creation apps and things like this to create really interesting ways to show your work. So I'll Thank go you. to that next week. Thank you, Mark. And actually that just tie in with a question we've just had from Emma. Um, and, and Emma would like to know, is it a good idea to put some work up on sites like Etsy um, alongside your own site to reach a wider audience? So if you could answer that, Mark, that would for Emma, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, sure, create an Etsy page, create an Art Rehome page, create an a, a Art Finder page. The problem is with all of this is the more you do and the more you put up, the more you have to administer. And when I say that, I mean, if you put up an Art uh, Finder page and nothing changes on that page for months and months and months on end, Yes, it's a calling card and hopefully it will drive you straight back to your website or whatever you use as your main thing. But what gets traffic in anything in the interweb is, is constant change. Google likes to see constant change on anything and anything there's constant movement all the time, then you go up in the Google rankings, okay? So if you have something that just sits there and never gets updated, it's a it might help you it might help you in the long run as a calling card but it might interfere with your the one that you really want to go to which is where you really sell them um so unless you're going to go to art rehome to etsy to art finder and constantly update those pages with the new works and everything else and the new sales buttons and all the other stuff you do i've not used those other platforms so i don't know um what you're doing is you're creating work for yourself for me, what I do is you just make one website which is phenomenal, which is updated, which is pushed to, you know, to its extremities with all the work you do. So you never send anybody anywhere else. Uh, and to me, that's a real simple way to keep it all in one place and very manageable. Lovely. Thank you, Mark. I've got a question in from Larry. Um, do art sales in general seem up or down in this uh, pandemic time? That's, a, that's an interesting question. Thank you, Larry. Well, if you run a physical gallery, I guarantee they're down um, because you can't open. And like so many galleries I see at the moment, don't have just got this thing on their web page which says this COVID-19 thing and blah, 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 and black, dark, we're closed, everything's terrible. And I'm just thinking, oh, guys, show me the work if you've got it. And if it is there, sell it. Um, I said last week, and it remains true today, that I have sold an average of one painting a day since the lockdown. Um, I've done as much in April, well, bar a thousand quid, which is nothing. I've done as much in April as I did when I was open last April and last April was a record month. So sales are there and if you are doing this and you are doing it well and promoting well when everybody else isn't, then you will make sales because where else are people gonna go? People have time at the moment, they are keen to spend the money that they would have spent to go on holiday maybe to buy something else instead as a treat for themselves. They have lots of time and they have lots of um, uh, things they want to do. So by creating a website that's updated, that keeps people in touch with stuff and everything else on a daily basis, using your social media and everything else and getting up there in, your, in their face and becoming present, you will sell paintings. It's as simple as that. Now, if you're just starting out now, you're late to the game. But it is definitely the future. As I say on the back of my book, by next year, Hiscox reckon there'll be 6.8 billion pounds worth of dollars worth of 
pound dollars oh i don't know worth of sales being sold online in, in art so as my old accountant irish accountant used to say if you're not in it you can't win it you've just, <laughs> got, to, you've just got to create the page create the platform and just let people find you okay can I just say, what a great accent that was, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the single worst Irish accent in history. <laughs> but he was a gorgeous man. And he was right, too. Lovely. Um, I don't have any more questions. Any more questions, guys, uh, for, for Mark, before we, we draw it to a close? Uh, and thank okay. you for coming along tonight as well. Perfect timing. 31 minutes. Look at that. One minute over. <laughs> thanks guys we've done really well um let's keep this going i hope it's enthusiasm everything you do increases the um the industry and brings the industry up in the name so they so i hope this has been helpful i hope it inspires you to do things and up your game a bit and get it out there and let's you know as they say a rising tide lifts all boats so let's start that tide flying in have a great week and see you this time next Thursday for social media and apps. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Debs. Thanks, Hayden.